If you asked most people to write a script or a story using ChatGPT, they would write a prompt similar to this one. In this video, I want to show you some advanced prompt engineering techniques that are both simple and easy to implement. You'll learn how to do storytelling with ChatGPT, but we'll also look at the multiverse. How could this look in the past or the future? Prompt engineering is something that I use all the time as a software developer and a researcher, but as a YouTuber, I use it for my content creation, script writing and image generation. So let's get into it. Let's head over to ChatGPT and we'll write a simple prompt. Write an illustrated story about a woman with her cat. I need to develop characters, beliefs, origin story, and finally write a day in the life story. So this is what I want to do. Now there's a problem. If you start writing a prompt like this and press enter, what will happen is ChatGPT will go off and write a whole lot of information because you haven't given it enough instructions yet. So what I like to do when I start a context is I like to say yay. And the idea of the say yay instruction is that ChatGPT just responds with yay. It doesn't do anything else. If you have any problems with this, you can also go into what are called your custom instructions and give a little bit of information about the yay statement. Here you can see if you see yay or read, just record the information. And these are two instructions that I use quite a lot. With our yay instruction in place, let's head over and write a prompt. We've got this prompt and one of the things to notice is that there is a structure to it. So it starts off with a task. Give me a physical description for. So this is the task that we're looking to do. From there, we've got a context, a blonde a brunette and a raven haired woman in her 30s. After that, we just limit it in this case to 20 words per person. We paste it into ChatGPT. We get the information we want and we can see here that we've got the blonde, the brunette and the raven haired woman in their 30s, which is a good starting point. With three physical descriptions about women, let's now come up with three types of women. And we'll do three types of women in their 30s, include a job, a hobby, and a personality. And we'll just keep it to 20 words. And what ChatGPT will do is come up with these simple little descriptions. We've got a pediatrician, software developer, and a marketing executive. And the pediatrician knits in free time, is compassionate, patient, and always smiling, loves interacting with children and parents. Now later on we'll randomly mix physical descriptions with types of women but for now let's go and look at another character. Now the story that I want to build is around a woman and her cats so the next prompt will be give me three types of cats and what ChatGPT came up with was a Siamese, a Maine Coon and a Bengal and if we look at the Maine Coon we got one of the largest domesticated cat breeds known for their bushy tails tufted ears and friendly dog-like personalities. Now that we have some basic description and type information about the cats and the women, let's go into how they might be thinking. Basically, we're looking at their belief systems. Now, whether you're a human or an animal, you do have some sort of a belief system. And we can get ChatGPT to build this for us so that the story is in alignment with the motivations. We'll do a little bit of research around belief systems found in women. Give me six, so that's the number of philosophical views that we're going to get from American women. But what I also want to do is break it up into two distinct groups. So we've got the traditional perspectives and we've got the polarizing points of view. And from that, we get these six different philosophical belief systems. We've got pragmatism, existentialism, and humanism as traditionals. And in the radical, we've got postmodern feminism, ecofeminism, and transhumanism. Next, we'll develop a belief system for cats. And you might be wondering, how can you do that? The way I look at it is we can have a life experience that the cat experiences. So give me three mild traumas affecting cats. But we can also have a positive or a negative experience based on different scenarios. So here I've said list the positive reaction that they might have if the owner was around and the negative reaction that they might have with another human being or a particular scenario. So we end up getting these three different traumas plus two different reactions based on whether they're around the owner or around the thing that causes the trauma. 
Now that we have descriptions, types, and belief systems for our characters, let's develop a personal identity for each of the characters. So what we can do is just ask questions of ChatGPT. Now it already has a lot of context in the background. So we'll just say, give me three female names, ages, and something they might be passionate about. Now keep in mind, we've already developed the concept that these are women in their 30s. So the age should be around that area. We know they're American women, so the names probably will be American in nature. When we go for the cats and we ask for the name and the age, we don't expect an age to be 50 years of age for a cat because they don't live that long. So let's see what happens with this basic prompt. We end up with three female characters and three feline characters. So we've got Emily, Claire and Nora. They're all in their 30s except for Emily who's 29. And we've got three different felines, Whiskers, Luna and Oliver, three, five and two years. And with the sort of names that might actually apply to a cat because no human would generally be called Whiskers. Now let's develop our backstory or the origin story for our characters. Now up until now, everything has been done with pretty simple prompts. We've got a lot of information that's being created. We don't know what information we want to select yet. So to build up the origin story is about drawing all that information together. So let's get started with the prompt. And the first thing we're going to do is write context. I already selected Emily and Whiskers and all we have about them is their name and their age. And we're saying create a character backstory about these two. It's going to be 500 words. Now from that, I've said specifically that I want a brunette. Now we did have a blonde and a raven haired lady as well. And I've said I want the main coon out of the three different types of cats that we had. But from ChatGPT, I'm going to let it select the type of woman. There were three to choose from. And the philosophical perspective, there were six to choose from. And from the traumas, we'll just randomly select one of them. Now the next thing you want to do is develop a guideline for the instructions. So ensure all the categories are covered and expanded. Most of the categories were only about 20 words long. So this expanded capability says, well, take it a little bit further, make it bigger, but use that as the starting point. The other thing is don't hallucinate. What we want to do is make sure it doesn't say anything that wasn't in the original information. So I said, when building the bat story, include details about their relationship and keep consistent to the selected characteristics of Emily and Whiskers. And the last bit in this is template expansion. So we said three to choose from, six to choose from, and I've just given it a briefing instruction that says, when you see choose from, look up the details from earlier in the conversation and expand on it. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. And firstly, we've got Emily who we did select, and we know that Emily was a 29 year old. Now the career marketing and the philosophy humanist was selected randomly by ChatGPT, but the hair color was selected by me. For the cat, we've got Whiskers, a three-year-old Maine Coon. And what we can see is that we've got this 500 word backstory about these two different characters. And hopefully it includes all the traumas, the interactions, and just their philosophical points of view. What's really interesting about developing a bat story this way is that you have all this information about their philosophical point of view, maybe how they come together, different background stories, which makes it really easy to develop day in the life sort of stories or other forms of stories. Now, before I go into the actual prompts talking about day in the life, let's look at how this could be automated. So one of the things that you can do with ChatGPT is you can create GPTs or you can use the APIs. What I'm about to show you as prompts could be automated so that every day for the next 365 days, you could create a daily chronicle about Emily and Whiskers and have a different story each day. So let's create the first day in our daily chronicles. And here I've said, create a day in the life of Emily and Whiskers in six scenes. I've given it a guideline, I've said, Ensure that Emily and Whiskers are in each scene. Ensure consistency with the backstory and the Daily Chronicle. Now, if you had more than one Daily Chronicle, day one, day two, day three, then you want to 
put in a little bit of information to make sure it checks the previous days so that you have continuity of story. But for this one, what we're going to do is make sure that there are four scenes that are based on our backstory. So we've got a scene where we see the type of woman that she is, a challenge based on Emily's philosophical perspective, one that shows the effect of Whiskers under trauma. The last one is the positive reaction that Whiskers has with Emily. Now, when we run the prompt, we end up getting six scenes created for our day in the life. And the first scene is with Emily and Whiskers doing their morning routine. We move on to a walk in the park. And based on the guidelines we put into the prompt, we can see that the scene illustrates Emily's advocacy for sustainability and her natural charisma engaging the public. So as I was going through this, I'm also trying to make images along the way that tend to fit the style. So most of the images will have Emily with a blue shirt, brown hair, we've got a Maine Coon in each one. The scene number three is just trying to demonstrate the fear or the anxiety that Whiskers is going on because of mild rain. We take that a step further in scene number four, where Whiskers is really affected by a trauma of a kid running around the cafe that they're in. But at the end of the day, they're now together, they're calm, we've got settled in a quiet corner of the coffee shop. Emily works on her laptop. And to finish off the day, we've got the evening relaxation going on. Now, as I said before, we can automate that and have every day created automatically. But another thing that you can do, and we see this in Marvel movies, is the concept of a multiverse. So how can we totally change the style and structure of the story without changing the backstories? I want to base the story off the one we just created in America 2024. So we have a prompt that says, using Emily and Whiskers Daily Chronicle America 2024, adapt it so that Emily and Whiskers are real life characters from Hamlet. It can take the story that we just had, rewrite it in a totally different style. And from here, we can see that we've got morning revelations. We've got the courtyard musings, a play within a play. We've got terminology. We've got graphics that are very Shakespearean style. Then we get into the ghostly encounter and the confrontation. That would map to the child running around in the cafe. We've got the confrontation going on. And then the end of the day, dark solace. Taking this a step further, we can let ChatGPT come up with our multiverse. So we'll do a new prompt, give me useful ideas for scenarios, keep it to 20 words per item. Emily and Whiskers in some sort of dystopian future and a random theme. For example, steampunk. What ChatGPT has come up with us is cyberpunk cityscape. We've got steampunk metropolis. We've got a climate dystopia. Let's do a daily chronicle with six scenes based on steampunk metropolis. And ChatGPT just responds with a similar structure in this dystopian future. So from here, we've got our morning ingenuity and twilight triumph. They're top and tailing the story. And then in the middle, we've got the market maneuvers, airship encounters, chased by the cog guard, which would be similar to the boy in the cafe and the underground revelations. Now that was prompt engineering techniques that you can use for storytelling. You can use it to write your scripts, your marketing material. You saw that I did a day in the life sort of story and I could also do dystopian futures or past multiverse sort of concepts. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe or drop a comment down below about prompt engineering, any questions that you might have. I'm Appy Dave. I tend to do videos on ChatGPT, YouTube automation or prompt engineering. So I'll see you in the next video.